Welcome to the All Better YouTube channel. Um, today I got I got a little something. I had a uh, fuck off YouTube Premium. I do not want a free trial. Uh, we got an Ethan King uh, who asked, "Could you make a video about the fuel system build and turbo slash intercooler build of my Volkswagen Rabbit?" So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We got some real technical bullshit right over here. It's a, it's a a pen and paper and we're gonna do a little overview about what's in the car then we're gonna look at the car then we're gonna drive the car that's what we got <laughs> all right here we have a shittily drawn picture of my uh, 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit Turbo Diesel 1.6 liters fuel system. Uh, so this area is the back of the car. This area is the front of the car, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's it's not particularly complicated. We got the fuel tank, which is this bread loaf looking thing. We have two lines coming from that. One is a return. One is a lead. That's pretty stock. Once we get up here, I do have an inline fuel pump I use. It's like a little electric doohickey. Um, it's great for feeding the main pump. I don't think, honestly, the main pump needs to be fed anymore. What it's really great for is when you take your injector lines off because instead of having to bleed everything by cranking your engine over, you just turn that thing on. It just starts pumping fuel right out of there, cleans them out no problem, bleeds them for you. And sweet. Anyhow, continuing on, this drive fuel into the main pump. This is the Volkswagen Turbo Diesel 1.6 liter pump. So it has a diaphragm. Oof, I didn't draw that. Oh no. Uh, uh. This pump has a couple things that are key about it. It was built by Guile's Performance Injection or some shit like that. Anyhow, guys in Canada does a nice job. He basically took a governor off of this thing, rebuilt it because it was pretty much a rusted heat that I got off a donor motor. Uh, so the main characteristics are that it doesn't have a governor. Uh, and that it's tunable, so I have the fuel screw turned in a bit. Maybe we can play with that later today. And uh, this diaphragm here actually connects to the inlet of my manifold. So this is manifold pressure reference, which is important because when you start adding boost to the system, you want to add more fuel as well. So you get more combustion, more power. Blah, blah, blah. This thing has four separate leads. I have four injectors, four cylinder motor, pretty straightforward. And these injectors are all rebuilt. That was done by Diesel's Fuel Injection over in New Hampshire somewhere. I think they're in... Nah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and they are 155 bar injectors. Now, originally I think they're more like 120 because it was a naturally aspirated motor. And you want the, the, the higher pressure build, which just means you shim the springs in them because it makes for a better dispersion pattern and just works better with the turbo setup. Now I'm going to draw the, the, the air intake side of things, the, the turbo basically layout, and just keep in mind that, that this nipple here that comes off the fuel pump is actually referenced to the inlet of the motor. So it's pressure reference to that. And that's really the, the, the one big tie-in. And then all these dotted lines here that are kind of scattered is just the fuel return. So any excess fuel in the system just goes right back to the tank. Pretty straightforward. All right, here we are again. This is the old 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit Turbo Diesel 1.6 liter turbo setup. All right, this drawing came out terrible, but as you can see, this is the front of the car as I have drawn quite nicely. Here is the back of the engine bay, so the windshield would start right about where all my writing is. And this little line here kind of shows you where the rain tray is in the car. So the current way I have it set up, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go cold side to hot side, meaning I'm gonna follow, basically follow the track of air as it enters the engine. So right here, this is the turbo. I'm currently running a G Garrett GT2052. Really nothing fancy about it. Honestly, kind of a dumpy turbo, but it's, it's kind of a nice size for this engine where it does have a fair amount of output at higher RPMs. And so here we go. The air gets sucked into the turbocharger. It is compressed. 
that then gets sent over to the intercooler, which I have currently stuck in my rain tray. Now, normally on rabbits, there is a cutout right about here where the heater previously went because they had to pull air from somewhere to heat it in your car. So I just expanded that and I cut it out to here and out to here. And now the air passes through the intercooler straight into the car. So drawbacks, when it rains, my car gets wet. So that kind of sucks. On the other hand, it's really convenient because I don't have piping trying to go around the engine, which I've simplified to this little box. But it doesn't have to go around, doesn't have to fit in front with the radiator or any of that junk. It just goes right back here. So that's super clean and tidy and easy. I really like it for that. Now, so air goes through the intercooler, which pulls some of that heat out of the air. Uh, and now it comes over here, where I have been using just a stock turbo diesel manifold. Made it up to the engine. Goes into my engine here, poorly drawn. There are the four cylinders, bang, 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 bang. And here is that fuel pump again, also connecting to each cylinder. So here we are, combustion happens. And if you can see these teeny tiny dotted lines back here, that is the exhaust manifold. I'm currently using a stock turbo diesel manifold that I have modified. So I basically, I'm not using a stock turbo, so it does not mate to the manifold. So I've made my own adapter to go between the Garrett turbo and the manifold. So here comes the hot air out, flows into the hot side of the turbo, which is what drives the cold side of the turbo, and then goes out the hood in this poorly drawn edition of a hood stack right here. Yet again, here is the fuel pump, and that is that diaphragm that controls boost reference fuel pressure. And so this actually routes over to the manifold somewhere, and I can show you that later in the car, but that connects back and that keeps the fuel matching the air input. And so that's that, that's about as easy as I can lay this out here. It's, it's kind of a, a, a bit of a cluster in real life, but that gives you kind of a preview of what the actual engine bay looks like among all the other fluids that have to go place. We're gonna do a quick run through the engine bay based on, based on, based on the sheet. Uh, so we're gonna do the fuel system first. Hey look, my Sharpie bled through. So this is the fuel system. All right, off we go. Mm -mm -mm. Here come those fuel lines from the gas tank. This back one is the return and it just loops around to the fuel pump. And here comes that front one. There's my secondary pump that's hooked up to a switch on the dash. That goes into the fuel filter. Whew, forgot that in the drawing. Fuel filter goes into the main pump. Here we are, main pump. There's the diaphragm on top that's referenced to the intake. Here are the leads that go to the injectors. And there are those injectors we just talked about. All right, bam, other side. Here we go. This is the turbo set up. Mm. All right, over here. Where is it? <laughs> uh, right there is the inlet to the turbo. Ah, man, I don't have an air filter on that. That's not so good. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. You know what, guys? It's cool to run your turbos without filters. That way you blow sand into your freshly built motor. It's perfect, it's great. Uh, anyhow, that goes in here. That makes a 90, ba ba ba. Tubing wraps around, bam. There's that intercooler we talked about with custom rag stuffed in so it doesn't vibrate. This takes air that comes through this right here in the hood and it pushes it through the intercooler and inside the car and that's how the intercooler actually cools itself. Cool! Uh, that then goes into this stock intake manifold. This manifold also has this dumb valve thing on it which is like a pressure release. We're not trying to release any pressure so I just block that in with a screw. That's the cold side, then engine goes bang, comes up the manifold which you totally can't see right now because it's under the other manifold, goes in the turbo turbo comes right here goes right out the hood everything is good and dandy and on fire there we are that is the turbo and fuel system layout in this car everything else you see is either coolant or oil lines so all right off we go usual thing here got the glow plugs run like so not gonna want to start it is about 20 degrees outside today this thing is not not it's just gonna not let's see what she does <laughs>
Well, it's too cold to stand outside to let it warm up, so we're getting some light refreshments here. Mm, little Reese's Cup action. What do we got going on out here? Oh, car's pretty much just detonating itself out of the parking lot. See all that? <laughs> Looks like it's on fire. We're gonna give that a minute to 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 warm up before it's even worth driving. Uh, and then uh, I think we're gonna try to go down the road where there's some hills and see if we can get some uh, some decent pulls in, so we can see the old turbo system doing it when it does best. Maybe see what there is in the fridge. Why not? Why not? Alexa, what temperature is it outside? Right now, it's 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 11 degrees. Have a good afternoon. Alexa, what's on my shopping list? You have nine items on your shopping list. Here are the five most recent. Netflix, Stinky <laughs> Lays Baked, One New Plantation House, and Purple Nipples. Would you like to hear your last four items? <laughs> yes, please. Sperm Bourbon Turd Burglar. All right. It's pretty warm now, so we'll take it out for a spin. Here we are. I, I literally thought we broke the manifold because I had this problem when I had compounds on it. When the EGTs get too high, it just blows out your crappy welds and then everything snaps and this rattles around. But it survived that big ass hill pull, which was cool. Uh, and uh, you know, nothing's broken. Uh, it is leaking coolant, but you know, I think I just need a new reservoir. So like, there you have it. The old big single turbo setup, not bad. We're definitely gonna have compounds coming in the near future, meaning like this summer, ha! <laughs> but, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>